All right, this is going to be our last section in Unit 1 before we take our exam in Algebra 2. Uh, it's the second part of Section 2.7. For now we're going to be looking at step functions. Now, step functions are a lot like what we were looking at before when we were looking at piecewise. Okay, because there's a whole lot of pieces now. So, for instance, we take a peek at this, and we're like, okay, now let's see how this works. And I'm going to label these off each with different colors again, just so you can kind of see every little piece that we're doing. Now, not every one of these is going to have, you know, four or five different pieces. It's just this one kind of lets us see everything in full effect. So, here's how this works. Just like before, I have a function. If it's between these ranges of numbers, this is my value. Okay, so I notice, I'm like, okay, so x is greater than or equal to 0, but less than 1, it's going to be at 1. And again, these are all y values. So, 1 is going to be open circle at 1, and then just a real short line and a closed dot here. Because if you notice, x is greater than or equal to 0, but open at 1, but the y value is 1. So then we go to the next one. Okay, my y value will be 2 when x is greater than or equal to 1, but less than 2. Okay, these are real short. This is why they're called steps. It kind of looks like steps when you start to do them. Okay, the third one, y value is going to be 3. When x is greater than or equal to 2, close circle, but less than 3, open circle. And finally, and you're probably getting the hang of it here, my y value is 4. When x is greater than or equal to 3, close dot, and open. And you start to notice, so this starts at 0. When it gets to 1, it's open. goes into this slot until it gets to 2. It's open. moves up here. It closes. takes care of that value. And it's just steps. And it's a step function. So this type of function, as we've said several times here in the last couple of minutes, is what's called a step function. It also can be written as something called a greatest integer function because these will always be in whole numbers and it might look something like this okay it's almost like brackets with an extra line in there so if you ever see that that's just a fancy way of writing that as a step function so you can use your graphing calculator to graph this now do you have to have one no because basically the step function, this is your basic step function, and all we're going to do is shift it sometime. We might lengthen the step a little. We might shift it up or down or left or right. But it's always going to work the same way. So if you go ahead and look in your graphing calculator, I'm going to pop mine up here on the screen. One thing that you can go ahead and do is if you hit the math menu, so just here under alpha, let me move this up a little bit. Try to get a little out of the glare. There we go. If you go over to num and either hit 5 or scroll down to it, okay, int is the greatest integer function. So you hit that and you're like, okay, well now how does this work? Well, for instance, if I wanted to graph number 2, which is, you know, the greatest integer function, x minus 2, what I would do, I would type in x minus 2, and then hit enter. You're like, well, wait a minute, it just says negative 7. I don't understand what you're doing here. Okay, because we have to get into the graph when we do this. So if we go to graph, go to y equals, what we're going to want to do at this point is type in the x minus 2, Go to your math now. Okay. Oops, I got a little ahead of myself. See, 
This is what can happen too sometimes, and I'm hoping you'll see this early in the year. Sometimes we can just have issues with this stuff, and it just causes trouble. I got ahead of myself with my x minus 2, so now I got to go back and start up again. So once you get to your y equals screen, go ahead and make sure it's gets cleared out. Okay? Have it ready to graph something. Let's repeat the step again. Go to math, over to num. That's better. Okay. Now we've got our greatest integer function working. So if we move this up and take a peek, we want to type in x minus 2. Okay. We don't have to have the fancy looking symbols out there. This will do us just fine. So if I do that and I hit enter, graphic. Now, when you see on here, there's a solid line that's going through. Okay, so you have options here. Even if you could just see the little dots, that can get kind of complicated to see what's going on. Here's the way I would look at it. This is just me. If you hit second and graph or second table, you can get where all of the values are. Now you'll notice that when we were graphing it before, it would always be that first dot would be the one that was closed. So you start to look at this, and you're like, okay, now how does this work? If you look at this one, this graph based versus the regular one that we did up above, everything's been shifted. So let me bring the graph back up for a minute. As you'll notice on ours, we basically were starting at zero and going from there. Well, now you'll notice we're starting over at three. So this has been shifted right to. If you want to see this differently, if you don't want to see all of the dots and things like that, okay, you don't want to do that, that's okay. So what you would have to do in that case, oops, I hit the wrong button, is let me pause here for just a second. I want to check one technical difficulty I'm having. All right, we're back on this one. I have this figured out. If you hit mode, and you want to do this for this one, if you go to dot and then graph from there, okay, it'll actually show you all the steps. And it won't you won't see that little line that was connecting them before when we had it up. So this may help you to figure out where all of your different graphs are because if you close in a little bit more, you might be able to notice. For instance, down here at negative 2, okay, we're at 0. So at negative 2, and then you go over 1 for each one. It's a typical step. So go over 1, circle, close circle above it, over 1, circle, 1. Notice where does it come on my graph at the x-axis? At 2, because I shifted right to. So closed, over, open, up 1, closed, over, open, up 1, closed, over, open, up 1, closed, over, open. And you get the idea. Okay. Typically one of these would start at 0, 0. But... As you shift it, okay, because if I went to Y, let's say I cleared this one out, and I just went to straight, let's say, let's say I just did X instead of X minus 2 like we have here in the first example, okay? So we'll go to math, go to num, and the integer. Let's just say we did X and graphed it. And again, it didn't like me with my dots here. I don't know why it wants to keep doing my dots. Well, now it wants to do the dots anyway. Okay. But even with that, you'll notice, where's the spot where it looks like it kind of disappears because it blends in? It starts at zero. Okay. So my typical greatest integer function starts at zero. But this will shift, in this case, to the right two. So if we switch over here and look at the next one, 
x plus 3, where do you think it's going to shift? If minus 2 shifted right, what do you think plus 3 is going to do? It's going to shift everything to the left 3. Now, if you're comfortable enough at that point, we probably don't even have to type it in the calculator because if the classic one without a shift starts at 0 with its first closed point, this one's going to start at 3. Go over 1, open circle. And then you go above it, closed, open, closed, open, closed, open, closed, open. But let's look at it just to see if that worked. Okay. So when you get here, you go again, math, over to num, we want x plus 3. Graphic. Notice, where is it going through my x-axis? 1, 2, 3. Okay, if you want to change the window to get a better look, okay, I can see it even better here. Here is 1, 2, 3 over to negative 2. Up 1, close, over. And you can see that it works the same way that I've got it graphed here. So basically if you start at 0, look to see the shift, make that first close dot and then go right 1, open circle, and just start making your step with it. That should make things very easy. Okay. Now, here a little different. We have a plus 3 but it's not inside our greatest integer function more. So maybe what kind of shift could that cause? Okay, up and down. The plus causes us a shift of up 3. So now, instead of my first dot being here closed at 0, 0, it gets shifted up 3. The right one. Above it. Above it. Above it. Okay, and you go that route. Now I can also go open, left, closed, open, left, closed, open, left, closed. Because all of my closed dots are going to line up, all of my open dots are going to line up, just like as though I was doing steps. Okay? Example 5. And you're like, ooh, I can actually start doing this without a calculator even. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to go down 4. Okay, so start at 0, 0, down 4. I can either go right open, up closed, right open, up closed, right open, up closed, right open, up closed, or go down open, left closed, down open, left closed, down open, left closed. And there are my steps. Okay, let's make sure. Let's get the calculator back out. Now let's clear this one out. Again, it's math. And now this time again, be careful. Close your parenthesis before you put in the minus 4, or you'll end up with a shift that's not the one that you're looking for. I graph that. And again, I notice. Here it is down at negative 4, starting at 0, and just stepping from there, just like I have it. Okay? So, last one to look at. Now, this one's a little more interesting. Let's go back to y and figure this one out. How's this one going to work? Now I have a coefficient in front of my 3x, in front of my x, excuse me. So, when I go to do this one, same deal. Whoops. Oh, we got the right one there. There we go. Integer. 3x. Any ideas on what's going to happen here? Let's get our window back. So I think we're going to need to have a little bigger window on this one. Now this one's a little trickier. Let me see if I can get my dot to go away again. That's better. 
because it looked like a line before, and you're like, oh, it's just a line now? No. If we take a closer look, so let's say maybe we're going to go... Okay. The steps are going up at a lot higher of a rate. They're going up a lot faster. If I were to look at my table, which is second graph, you'll notice, oh, so for every x value, if I start at 0, 0, it's going to the right one and up 3. So let's think about that for a minute. Okay, I got 0, 0. That's over and open. Then when I'm at x equals 1, I'm at y equals 3 and over. My steps are still only going to be one wide. But every time I step over 1, I go up 1, 2, 3. I'm at 3, I go up 3. I go down, okay, open, and it works both directions, okay. So this is a step by three. In other words, we're multiplying by three. And the same thing would happen when we go ahead and get over to here, we're going to step by 4. We're going to multiply by 4. So my initial point would be at 0, just like it would with a base. You can see my step real good right there. But now when I get to 1, I go up to 4. When I'm at 2, I go up to 8. And it's still only 1 each way. When I get to negative 1, I'm down to negative 4. Negative 2 is at negative 8. Going the other way. Okay? So again, if it's inside the greatest integer function symbol, excuse me, okay, then it's going to be a left or a right shift if it's plus or minus. If it's outside, like it is in 4 and 5, it's an up or down shift. And if it's inside, it's just stepping by a different number. A few to try today. If we're having questions, we can work with it some more. We'll leave it out.